Hey YouTube, what's up? This is part two of health machine from hack the box. And in the first part, we got the user. We reached up to user and we logged in and this is, this was the first flag. So in this video, I'm going to uh, escalate our privileges from Susan user to root user. And if we see here, um, how many users are there? Those can run bash from the etc passwd file. So you can see there are only three users. The first one is Gog, second one Susan, third one Root. Uh, there is no uh, benefit to go back to the Gox user because Susan user is superior and have more privileges than the Gog. So there is one user which is our destination is going to be Root to be the whole sole authority of this target. So let's go, we enumerate first manually so i always do this uh, these commands uh, on any test on any uh, machine so first thing first which is the operating system what version of operating system or what operating system is running uh, how many users are there uh, and if it is a server so on what ports this machine is listening so let's say in um netstate space hyphen tlpn okay if config so how many um nick cards are there so there is only one which is eth0 uh, second thing it depends on while enumerating it depends on its windows or linux so i would like to see if there is any binary on which seuid bit is set so perm space hyphen u equals to s2 slash dev slash null and um, all this seems normal um, the next thing I would like to see the processes ps space aux um, okay uh, let's clear this ps a u x w w um so if we see here in the processes there is one which is interesting for me and that is network dispatcher and it's running as root but we will also see the live processes or real-time processes and those processes actually you cannot see uh, using this psaux command because those process just start and then after a few minutes or seconds they terminate so most of the time you cannot see those processes here and for that i'm going to use uh, pspy which is same like uh, procmon in the windows so let's go i'm going to actually download two files on the target cd slash opt and python3 space hyphen m http dot server on port number 80 and here i'm going to say wget http colon slash slash and my ip was 10 10 14 dot 27 slash linpeace dot sh this is the first file which i want to download and the second file is going to be pspy 64 fine PSPY64 okay um, until it's finished I'm going to take one more SSH shell as Susan user on this terminal and it will ask for the password so we already have password here I'm going to copy that come here and paste that okay the files are downloaded clear that and now I want to set the execution permission on them so plus x um, linpeace.sh and 
chmod plus x PSPY 64 okay everything is set now what I'm going to do here first I'm going to execute the lin piece command so lin piece dot sh I don't need that clear this so let it run and we can also execute here PSPY but right now while executing linpiece I'm not going to execute PSPY because this linpiece is going to execute too many commands on the target and those commands may trigger other processes and services and whatever it triggers it is going to captured here in the PSPY so and that is going to make a lot of uh, you will see a lot of processes here and among those processes maybe the important one will be disappear or you cannot see or you may uh, miss that so the first thing is let the P uh, lin piece finished so I'm going to pause the video and once it's finished I'll be back so welcome back guys and the lin piece is finished now let's see so these are all the files those contains the word password or credential and here are some uh, passwords in the config.php file but the password is empty or null um, scroll up all hidden files okay and that seems the root directory for the application web application okay scroll up scroll up capabilities are there but all these capabilities um, not interesting go up and here we find password so what we saw before that in net state space hyphen tlpn command we found that uh, port number 3306 is listening on the local port or published on the local uh, local host so that means my sql server is running and here we found the password for the my sql server here so this is interesting for me and we are going to copy this and keep it with us and we will try to execute and we will try to access uh, database later let's see if there is anything interesting more here uh, there are other configuration database.php file uh, and the database name is forge but the password is empty and um, this is the redis host okay we don't have password here let's go up so there is virtual hosting and if we see that nothing interesting much here scroll up and here as you can see 3306 only one interface is there um, these are the processes okay so here I'm going to execute now PSPY 64 and let it run let's see what we will get here clear that let it run come back to the limb lin piece and it's suggesting some um, kernel exploits um, in the environment this is again interesting part because sometime you find some interesting path and the credentials here 
if you are going for password hunting there are few disks there okay i think that's enough i'm going to clear that so go back to the pspy and here let's see if we find something interesting um so user where is it user has been cron space hyphen f that means some cron job is running and if we see here okay i am going to control c because i think this is what we need um up to here i'm going to copy that and paste it with me paste it so this is cron job and in the cron job what it's doing um it is going to execute a command with the bin bash space hyphen c for command and it is sleeping for 5 seconds waiting for 5 seconds then after that it is executing clean.sh file and what is inside clean.sh i think we have no privilege to read this file because this file is inside the root directory and all this process is running with the uid 0 means root right and there is duplicacy so i am going to delete that um then it is going to execute php artisan schedule run um no idea what is artisan then again it is going to execute another command and in that command it is first changing the directory to var www.html and inside var www.html it is executing um artisan with the php as schedule run then it is going to grab the column from stty okay grab columns stty this is again okay here it's trying to start apache fine and then it is executing mysql command for the laravel and it is executing truncate command to the tasks so truncate means it is going to delete anything inside the table but without changing its structure that is what i know about truncate um let's see here we have here we have database so as you can see database name is laravel database password is laravel oh, sorry database name is laravel username is laravel so it is going to delete anything inside the task so task could be the table i think let's go and um i'm going to clear it <coughs> and let's access mysql so mysql space hyphen capital d for the database name which is laravel space hyphen u for the username username again laravel and space hyphen p for the password now it's asking for the password which we already have it here so copy that come back here control shift v to paste it and we are inside mysql um wonderful so show databases there are only two information schema is the default one and laravel uh, and i think we are already inside laravel because here we mentioned that Uh, we are accessing mysql for the laravel database um so show tables and these are the tables inside the laravel database and if we see all these tables you can see here tasks table is there and the same thing it's doing here so i think um it is executing a scheduled job and it is executing uh, this command which is waiting for 5 seconds then it is executing clean.sh and with the same cron job it is also executing this truncate command for the task um table so to delete any data inside this table so if we try to see 
if there is any data inside this table or not. So select a star from task. And as you can see, there is nothing. This is empty. Fine. Um, I would like to see um, how many columns are there. So describe task and bunch of columns id webhook only error um, monitor url frequency created at and update and all these all these four these four um, rows or these four entries we see here so if I go to access HTTP colon slash slash health dot HTTP and so here let's try to capture the request with the bub suite. So HTTP colon slash slash 10.10. .10. This is my IP. And again, this is my IP. Same like what we did. So test it and come back to the burp suite in HTTP history. We found this post request. And inside this post request, if we see closely, these are the uh, data parameters. So leave the token. Here you can see webhook is there and monitored URL is there, frequency is there and only error is also there. And all these four fields you can also see here. That means we can somehow maybe we can access the same service by making here some records in this table. Um, but let's see, I need to I'm going in to the application directory to see how application is working with that. So HTML ls space hyphen la. And as you can see, this is the artisan which is executed with the PHP in the cron job. And this is the env file from where uh, linpeace grab the password for the database. Clear that and cat artisan so laravel start it requires this directory inside vendor app.php is inside bootstrap let's see clear that list again and there is directory named as app so if we go inside app um, there is console exception http model i think this is the directory for the application which is running here um, let's see i want to see one by one what's inside all these directories so there is kernel.php and i think the Let's see, cat um, console and kernel.php. So function schedule is there. Get all tasks from the database, task all for each task. Okay, frequency task is equal to frequency. It's mentioned here. So health checker check task from the uh, webhook URL and tasks from the monitor URL and task to only error. And that is what we have here. Inside the task table, we have all these fields. Um, okay. But not much here. But we find one thing interesting, which is this. And this is actually the controller for this application, this application health check application. So let's go and see 
this controller because the business logic may be refined and mentioned in the controller. So this is the path HTTP controller health check inside controllers. Let's see. So CD, um, we are already inside app. It is HTTP and inside HTTP there is controllers clear ls space hyphen la and inside controller there is health checker controller so cat this and health checker dot php and this is the controller so um, public static function check so this is the function which is responsible to check whether the target is up or down or its health is good or bad okay this is the check function and this check function needs these arguments so the first argument is webhook the second argument is monitored url and only error must be equal to false so now if we see here it is defining the values and then it is going to say response in the response it is going to get the grab the content of the file whatever you mentioned as the value of monitored url and this is the lfi vulnerability i think because in the monitored url in the monitored url here here we define what we need to monitor means the destination which we need to check so here actually in, uh, in the initial stages we were blind because we don't know what's uh, running in the background but now if we see that it is actually grabbing the contents of the file so instead of mentioning here uh, http url if we mention the file url so it will grab us the content of that file and if only error return json it is going to say up or down or uh, yeah here else it will be down and this is the header defined here so fine wonderful um, i'm going to grab this with me this part so paste it here save it and we will try to exploit this one and now the picture is clear let's see i'm going to build a query because as we can see here this table is empty there is no data so i'm going to build a query um, insert into into which into task table and insert what let's see now here the thing is as you can see null so there is a condition what are the fields here those can be null and what are the fields here those cannot be null so id field cannot be null because here it's mentioned null is no um, similarly webhook url cannot be null this field also cannot be null this also cannot be null and frequency also cannot be null these two tables can be null so we must mention these fields in the insert uh, query so insert into task id comma let's say webhook is that comma then only error copy and paste that then monitored url so copy that and paste it and then frequency copy and paste so now we need to define here values so values are going to be now uh, before putting the values you must know the data type so as you can see id data type is character means a string this is also a string only error is tiny integer that means you uh, have to mention here the integer without uh, enclosing that value into the quotes a monitored url again 
string and frequency is a string so <coughs> id is a string so let's say one and then uh, we have webhook so webhook is going to be um, the ip where we listen so 14.27 it is actually the payload url this one so wherever we listen as we listen with the netcat in the initial foothold okay so if you want to listen on any port you can specify here colon whatever your port i will listen here on 80 so it's up to you um, then the third one is only error so because only error is tiny integer so we will put here zero also if we see here it's saying only error is equal to false false means zero so we put here zero um, another thing if we go to the burp suite we can see the only error value is zero so we will do the same thing here now the next thing is monitored url the url which you want to monitor and this monitor url is defined here with the file get contents so i'm going to get the content of the file file url slash etc slash shadow this file always there uh, because maybe uh, the root user do not have id rsa file okay so we will first confirm that okay this is working with this okay and now the last thing is frequency so frequency again it is <coughs> uh, a string and the frequency value if you remember we put this like this fine and done so um copy this let's go here and first thing first i'm going to start here the netcat listener so nc space hyphen nlvp on port number 80 because i do not define any port that means port number 80 and now here i need to insert these value in the table so hit enter and if we go to check so as you can see our entry is there with webhook and we will try to get the content of this file and these two values are null so we need to wait until uh, the cron job run but one thing we need to remember that the cron job also executing truncate command which is going to delete this uh, content in the task table and as you can see it is deleted nothing is there now so again insert this and this time what i'm going to do i'm going to keep inserting values like id1 then id2 then id3 and these values will be same so even if one of them is deleted other will be there and it will be executed so hit enter and here come back and yeah before we insert this time our query is executed and as you can see here inside body first of all the health is up and as you can see inside the body you get the content of etc shadow file so i'm going to copy this come back here in a new tab um, new tab i'm going to paste that so these are the hashes and this is the hash of the um, root user then slash n means new line this is the second user slash n means new line this is the third user and this is the fourth user so in that way you can actually create a file and then you can go for the um, hash cracking but our but our purpose is to get other files like let's say um, come back here first of all i'm going to clear this and come here let's see now this is still there uh, let's wait until this entry is deleted or we can up to its deleting i'm going to 
sit here root slash dot ssh slash id underscore rsa id underscore rsa so we need to grab the private key of root user rest of the things are okay let's hit enter and as you can see duplicate entry because id is equal to one this entry is, is still there it's not deleted um so let's we need to wait okay now it's deleted so nothing is there now we need to execute this command okay hit enter oh come on i did not start the listener let's see just wait a moment until the cron job is executed or let's try to make other records so that if the first one is deleted we have other entries like two and and yeah that works now so we got the root private key i'm going to copy this and come back here in the new tab paste that and we just need to manage this a bit so whenever you see wherever you see slash n this is actually regex for the um, new line okay and there is also one escape character this one so you need to delete this also uh, okay and slash n c slash n there okay there is another slash n uh, this is the escape character so i'm deleting this delete slash n make enter this is escape character again delete that and there is slash n hit enter And there are escape characters like these slashes we need to delete. Slash n and slash n. With that slash n, delete these. Okay, here is also one. So let's just delete few of these characters. Okay. And the last one is here. So just delete that, hit enter. Now this is our IDRSA uh, private key for root user, id underscore RSA. Hit enter, come back to the terminal and control C, clear that. Here I'm going to say, okay, now, chmod okay i'm inside this directory now let's go to desktop stb health and let's change the permission to 600 for idrsa file clear and let's try to access the root user with that idrsa key root at Hell.htb, hit enter, hope for the best, um, id underscore rsa, what's wrong with that? Clear, uh, we messed up something, yeah, here we messed up, this is the thing, we did not delete that. So save it again, and there is one more, this one, save it. Uh, that seems perfect. 
let's try to execute it again we successfully access ssh with root user so now what i'm going to do clear that um who am i id and the host name we are root um list the files and directories and there is root.sh so clear it again and cat root.sh uh, root.txt sorry and there is your root flag so that's it for this video we are root we compromise the whole machine and we are the whole sole authority now of this target so if you like the content please like subscribe and share i'm going to see you in the next video bye